Boom. Hello and welcome to the Protector Nation podcast, a podcast that is dedicated to making the world a better place, making the world a safer place by making good people dangerous. In this podcast, we're going to study and understand what it takes to protect, to protect your family, to protect your loved ones, because we all know that you have a few basic needs, food, water, and shelter, but you also have the need to protect those things in a world and society where evil runs rampant and is sometimes left unchecked. Learning how to protect yourselves and your loved ones is becoming more and more important. And so we strive to raise the level of accountability to those who would do evil on this planet by making sure that the sheep, that the flock, is more well versed in protecting themselves and their loved ones. If that sounds interesting to you, then sit back and enjoy the show. Out. Boom! What's going on, you guys? Byron Rogers. Welcome to another episode of the Protector Podcast, Executive Protection Lifestyle Podcast. I've got an honored guest with me today, uh, Matt Peck. How you doing, brother? Good, brother. I uh, appreciate you having me on, man. It's been a work in progress, and uh, yeah, happy we put it together. Yeah, dude. Like this has been me and you. I think, and I, and I'm used to this, man. Like I'm totally used to. Because people who are good at what they do are in high demand. So all the people I talk to, we set a date and we kick it down the road for like three months or so. And it's just like when it falls in, it falls in and then we fire it off, you know. But me and you have been trying to get this done for a minute. <laughs> yeah, it's all good. You know, that's the game, man. That's the way of it. I dig it, man. Um, but, you know, we're busy. We're hammers, man. We're getting stuff done. So it's an honor. These are the right people to fly with and, and, and interact with, man. So. Heck yeah, man. Well, that's what's up. For those of you who aren't familiar with Matt, would you mind just digging in real quick and just give him a little overview of what you've been up to and what you do in our space? Yeah, so uh, Matt Petch, the operational athlete. That's uh, my page, my company. Um, 15 years Army, 12 of those U.S. Army Special Forces. Um, I'm an ODA as an 18 Charlie, so demo engineering specialist. You know, right. Had uh, nine overseas trips for those are combat deployments. The other five were training environment. And then, uh, yeah, current LEO for the last seven years. I work patrol. It's fun. I work graveyards on the weekends. It's great. And uh, also have a nonprofit called Ruck for Vets. And I do uh, weekly workouts with vets and first responders. Um, call them veteran Tuesdays, but they're pretty much every day. But that's kind of where it started. So, yeah, I just like giving back and just training people to stay in shape for you know keep your mind right while keeping your body tight is what i've been saying lately you know so that's what's up man no that's what's up man you definitely your body's definitely tight man you be one you're one of them shirt off dudes you know what i'm saying <laughs> one of those shirt off dudes man you know like i'm just getting into the shirt off dude space i've been working on it you know i got fat kid jeans so it's like up and down kind of you know but i was I've been, I've been i've been calling it thick dad summer because i had surgery uh june 28th so i gained like 10 pounds just because i usually run i usually run like you know 50 to 100 miles a month what? so i gained like 10 pounds just from not running but it's good weight you know to put on a little size yeah <laughs> Ain't nothing wrong with that that's what's up man no i love it i um when it comes to this protector lifestyle and you've heard me say it probably a million times you know protection is more than just a job it requires a lifestyle and i think like you're with what you do, man, and and kind of your mission, it really speaks to that, you know, because uh, I think guys are crazy if they think they're just going to be fit and come to work and be ready. You know what I'm saying? Be ready to fight dude who's been scrapping in alleyways and getting jumped in and getting stripes and doing dirty deeds in the dark for cheap for a, a half a lifetime by the time you catch up with them, you know. What would you say about the the lifestyle behind um, what it takes to, to be as advertised. Um, I think, I mean, you got to live and breathe it. Uh, there's a time and a place, obviously, you know, you want to, you want to shut it off when you're with your kids or with your, your family, as far as like how, how prepped you are, I guess, you know, no matter what, I'm always scanning when I'm with my family, I'm always protecting, um, protector always, you know, yep. um, and that's just that's just the lifestyle you know but like sometimes i gotta i gotta take it down a notch on the exterior you know in order to adapt to the normal life you know i can't i can't be constantly checking my six with my kid in my hands using like dad what's wrong with you right. um but you know like it just i don't know it never stops i mean right 
you hear something in the middle of the night, get up, take a, mm. take a look. Don't just think it can't, it might be nothing. You never know. Like right. constantly going in, you know, we talked about this previously and it's just like, for me, like my motto is lift, fight, shoot. It's constantly being trained in all three of those disciplines. Um, whatever it is, I don't care what kind of martial arts you do. I don't think any of them are better than the other. Yeah. Doing something is better than doing nothing. Right. No, I dig that. Live, fight, shoot. That's hard. I like that. Can you go a little deeper into that, man? What does that mean to you? Yeah, so I try to I try to live up to that. I try to do at least one of those disciplines weekly, um, but it ends up being like a three to two to one ratio for me. Um, you know, at least get a good workout in, you know, at least three times a week. It involves like functional training. So, you know, I, I will lift weights here and there, you know, because sometimes it's time or sometimes I need to work on a certain uh, part of my body because I'm either struggling with an injury or whatever it is, a little maintenance day. Uh, but I try to get in the gym, which is my garage gym or to the beach for some sort of training sandbags, or whatever it is, at least three times a week. And then the other two is try to at least get some sort of like martial arts discipline in. Uh, right now, recovering from injury. So really all I'm doing is shadow boxing, but it's something, you know, I'm keeping my shoulders good. I'm keeping my cardio good. Cause as we know, once you start throwing punches or you start rolling around on the ground with somebody, I don't care if you're the biggest, baddest bike rider, runner, swimmer, there is, you're going to be like, Oh shit. You know, this, <laughs> this is a different kind of cardio, right? You know? And, uh, you know, I try to get out to the range at least once a week. And if I'm not at the range, I'm at least dry firing. I'm at least you know, going through my kit, making sure everything's fitting right. You know, um, dry firing's free, shadow boxing's free, body weight workouts are free, running's free. Like, you don't need fancy equipment to stay with this model, stay with this discipline. Um, and with all that, you know, that keeps your mental, your mindset sharp. You know, that's the fourth one: lift, fight, shoot. Mindset. Um, by keeping all three of those sharp, your mindset will be good. Yeah, it's amazing how much. You know, I feel like people miss out so much, but it's amazing how much these physical things we do really contribute to the strong mind, strong soul, strong mind, will, and emotions, man. You know, it's 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 like a therapy, man. What would you say about that? <clears throat> yeah, I mean, that's kind of why I started this whole operational athlete project in 2017. I just got back from my last combat tour in 2016 to Afghanistan. Okay. Um, we lost lost a couple kids. Mm -hmm. And it kind of, kind of hit me. I kind of got back, started hitting the bottle a little too much and, just, you know, ended up moving out of my house, separating from my wife at the time. And like, man, it was, I was going down this spiral, but then I started getting back into this fitness mindset. Like I had overseas where it was like part of my daily routine. I started getting that routine back. And once I had that routine back, I started training harder and harder, started helping people. And then I was like, man, this is making me feel good. You know? Um, so it's definitely a part of my, my therapy regiment is training and then um you know i started figuring out exactly what it is you know like i like to train at the beach you know yeah. i like to shoot i like to just get a good sweat going and just feel that at a, i don't know i just like that feeling of exhaustion it's like it's reset your mind you know and i oh, tell yeah. guys like if, if you need a if you're in an argument with your wife or something just go in the garage and you know pump yeah. out some push-ups go for a run around the block run some sprints you know it just helps so much you know mitigate <laughs> some of that anger that comes with, you know, being deployed or being in a protector lifestyle, you know, cause we're constantly turned on. Like I, I like to say, there's like no dim switch. It's either on or off. Right. Um, uh, and you know, it's funny. Rambo said it the best. I don't care what anybody said. And I don't care how cheesy it is either, but like, <laughs> when he's like, you just can't turn it off. Like, I mean, like I don't man, like I go to work, I'm working, I'm doing my thing. I'm reading the room. I come back, I'm with my family, I'm reading the room. I make it look, I, I, want, I want to say I make it look good because that's what a professional does, you know? <laughs> like you relax, you make it look relaxed, but you're like a duck, you know, them little legs are going. Those little legs are going underneath the water, but you see, you know, you don't want it to ever impact those around you. But as far as the tool of physical exhaustion and the, the I mean, the release of the positive endorphins in your mind and the, 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 like that whole cathartic, like inner conversation you're having, like um, now we're just going to be in a veteran space for a few minutes. Like for me, you know, coming back from Iraq and doing the stuff I did, which, you know, obviously is a, is a drop in the bucket compared to what you've done, but I still go every day I wake up, I'm going back to war. Yeah. Like I'm literally in my head, like, yo, guess what? When we were Marines, we went ham. 
So guess what I'm going to do now? I'm going mother freaking ham. I'm going to go downstairs. Yeah, exactly. Boom. And I'm in there and I am battling and I'm talking to myself. I'm getting as strong as I can. So that when the day starts, like I am in my mind, just taking down targets, taking down different uh, freaking uh, goals. And I'm just like killing dragons. And, and, and by the end of the day, man, I feel spent and I feel good. And I feel that a lot of veterans lose that combat centric mindset because it's so like an never ending cartoon here, you know, that they forget to take that engine and like, be like, dude, use this crap in your day, man. You know what I mean? What do you think? Yeah. No, absolutely. And, and I think it also helps with like sleep too. So, cause so many guys suffer from sleep disorders when you're living at this high paced lifestyle and you get home and your brain is just so hard to shut off. But if you can at least put yourself through some sort of physical activity, it's going to help with sleep a little bit. Um, I mean, it helps me. I know that for sure. You know, also staying off the ice cream sandwiches and hostess cupcakes, you know, is going to help Dang. with sleep. Um, those late, late night, late night snacks. But uh, I, I think training definitely helps me relax towards yeah. the end of the day. Um, yeah. Yeah. Are you a morning trainer or an evening trainer? First thing when I wake up, fast and training every day. Same here, man. It's been great. Yeah. It's yeah. funny. I can't, I can't, I can't eat then work out. I feel like, I don't know, just like gross. <laughs> yeah. I've, I've been, I've been doing it for years though. So it's just, I don't yeah. even know, if, you know, intermittent, intermittent fasting from, you know, night till about 1130 in the morning. Yeah. That's about it. Dude, no, man, that, that's been the cheat code for me too. My little fat kid jeans. And I'm like, I think I finally got the hack, dude. Like, cause <laughs> uh, I tried all kinds of stuff. And then right around, I started like about a year or so ago, intermittent fasting. And it's not even, I'm not even trying to go ham to one meal a day. You know, I'm like around 12 o'clock, maybe I'll push it to one thirty or so, have my first meal, have my second meal in the evening. And then um, I've also been cutting out the sugar, but that finally seems like it's, it's starting to lean me out. And I'm like, ah, oh, thank God, man. But it, I feel healthier, so much healthier. And I love that feeling when my stomach has time to just like flatten out and that insulin resistance is getting hammered. And like, it's amazing y'all. You should really try it out, man. I, I really, that, and I, the kind of more paleo diet, you know, sugar is like, death like i'm more scared of sugar than i am of cocaine i love sugar but it's like a bad ex-girlfriend yeah i mean like you won't go away sometimes you know oh that's great yeah i had to figure out for me it was like uh lean meats so like elk bison um you know turkey that stuff really kind of helps it same like you said like the belly go down i feel i don't feel as heavy all the time um so i really do a lot of those meats now um which i think have really helped me like maintain you know, during all these surgeries and stuff like that, I've had and injuries I've had over the last couple of years. So, yeah, man, what would you say about the tool of fitness in the life of a protector? You know, like I, I just, I want to talk about this because I, an EP, it's like the wild west, you know, you might get a guy who's a freaking stud, who's a God, you know, but then you also might get a guy that's like, just ain't been to the range. He's like, I was a seal or I was a this, that, and the next thing. And you're looking at him and you're like, homie, but like, you know, we got to work today right now. And you're like 40 pounds overweight, you know, like, um, but, or, or even cops, sometimes you see him and you're like, oh, bro, like, what are you doing right now? You know, if, if, you know, some 20 year old, whatever rolled up on you, <laughs> might give you a heart attack, you know? Um, yep. what would you say about the tool of fitness to professional protectors? I think, uh, I've talked about this before. It's uh, you need to be in at least a good a shape or better to carry your buddy out of a harsh environment or carry whoever you're protecting out of a harsh environment if the time comes. So if you can't pick me up and carry me a hundred yards to cover, fifty yards to cover without having a heart attack. Like you should not be in this profession. Oh. Bottom line, you know, yeah. like if you can't if you can't drag my body away. You know, to per, to protection to at least perform first aid, then return fire. Like, you know, you shouldn't be in this profession. And I see a lot of these guys. I mean, I see guys just get stressed out after having to chase somebody and then try to apply a tourniquet. Like, uh, what's going on? You know, and that takes practice. You know, in inputting fine motor skills into your uh, physical training is very important. And a lot of people don't do that. And um, I, whenever I I think of you know the tool. Of physical fitness it's it's for it's for me to get home and it's for my partner to get home 
whoever yeah. I'm working with or whoever I'm protecting. I need to be able to do whatever I can physically, mentally, um, tactically to get them out. And physical fitness is one of those necessary tools that you have to have. Like, what if, you know, my partner weighs 260 pound cop, you know, out of shape. And I have to, now I have to sacrifice myself to drag him, which I will, I yeah. will do it. Right. But and now I'm putting myself at risk because of his lack of motivation, his lack of discipline, you right. know, and then the opposite goes, you know, when he's got to move me now. Right? So it's definitely an important tool to, to keep sharp, you know, the sharpest hammer in the toolbox. Nah, I dig it, man. <laughs> no, I agree 100%, man. We, we must be formidable, but like, I feel like we got to be better than, you know, the aim is to be better than the enemy, you know, like if we're freaking playing kickball and like there are no trophies and like, we just want to have fun with our friends because it's like Saturday, then fine, dude, whatever. But if you're a professional protector and your life and other people's lives might depend on your performance, it's just, we have to be better than the enemy, man. hundred percent. Now you never know when you're going to have to, you know, run into a building, grab somebody, carry them out, run back into a building, grab somebody, carry them out. Yeah. Keep doing that until reinforcements arrive because yeah. these guys are dead. These guys are dead. These guys are still bedded down, firing rounds. Like, I mean, that should happen in combat a lot, you know, and guys did it. You yeah. know, some of those guys are still here. Some of those guys aren't, you know, but they did it. Yeah, yeah. no, I, and I, I do think that's definitely in my opinion, an advantage I do have. Uh, and I think you also have, is it like, you know, and that, well, before I say that, this goes for the civilians too. Like you never know when you're going to be in Seven Eleven, and someone's going to, someone's going to kick off, dude. And you're going to have to go a few rounds with somebody or three guys, you know, and, and, and have to defend yourself and your family, what you love, what you stand for. You know, you never know when that's going to happen. If it's going to happen, hopefully it never does. But I think it's just part of being like a high, high quality human, a higher quality human. I'll say it comes with bringing a higher quality of physical fitness to the game. If you can, you know, personal protection is about the person it's self protects and self-defense about self. If you're a 110 pound human, that's not very physically potent. Well, then you should learn some tools to balance off that playing field, balance out that playing field. But that's about you. But if you have it and you're capable of being fit, it is a tremendously important tool, man. You know, that's huge. It could happen to any of us. But anyways, I was going to say, like, I think the advantage that guys like us have is just that we know how insane things can get. Like, like I'm never going to, I get, I get to, when I go to the gym, I'm in my mind knowing how crazy things you can get. And I'm just like, I'm going to be as hard as I can for as long as I can until God just, you know, decides it's, to, you know, time for me to depend on other people, <laughs> you know, because yeah. uh, when you know how insane it can get, it's like, it's a, it's a driver, I believe. The world can be a chaotic place and being prepped is, I know it's peace of mind. Yeah, hundred percent. And that people can count on you. It's huge. What'd you say is your biggest takeaway from the time, your time in the Green Berets, man? That's cool. Man, so many, you know, but uh, I definitely think the will to push myself beyond my my limits is one of them, as well as being able to operate in a team environment. So being able to push myself beyond my limits, you know, that intestinal fortitude, not giving up, you know, that's yeah. something that you you realize. I was talking to a kid yesterday about it who's going to selection in January. Mm -hmm. And uh I was like, you just can't, you can't quit. You're going to get to that point where you see others quitting. And you're like, okay, it's, it's okay. This guy quit. No, it's not okay. Like you need to keep pushing yourself. You're going to be in pain. You're going to be cold. Things are going to hurt. You just got to keep going, man. Um, and it's taught me that like through everything, like every workout I do, I try to get one more rep, you know, sometimes I'll be running like one more mile, just pushing myself past that limit. Cause you know, you set set out to run five miles today. When you're at like four miles, your body's in your mind are connecting they're like all right we're almost done and then when you just trick your body right there boom one more you know it's like oh shit and uh that goes with everything in life you know just just taking that extra inch that extra foot extra mile and yeah. then as far as teamwork goes you know going from there into pd and like even working with my vets outside of both of those like it's definitely been great to build these these teams i feel like i have I don't know, like 10 separate little teams surrounding me now, which are awesome. I got my shooters, my physical guys, I got PD, military, you know, 
I love that team environment. I love operating as a team. And uh, that was probably one of the, the best you know, aspects of it as well. Mm-hmm. Heck yeah. No, that's awesome, man. That pack mentality is, is, is powerful. And you know, that, that never give up, man. I just can't stress enough. I hope veterans like, don't give that up, you know, just cause you're not in camis anymore. Don't give that yeah. up. Man. That has to do with everything we're doing. And it has, to do, it's one of the most valuable things you can be taught in life. And I, as I work with civilians, I have to teach them that, you know, like <laughs> I have to be like, no, what are you going to do? You're going to fail. You're going to quit. Like, is that, you didn't know, well, you better know. Like I have to, I have to do that stuff sometimes, you know? And I'm like, dang, man, that's such an invaluable education. You know, that's huge. When I see, I see hard to kill in a lot of the marketing, what do you believe makes a protector hard to kill when it comes to your brands? You know, is there any, is there a trifecta or there's some bullet points? If you're going to speak on that, what would you say? Yeah. I mean, hard to kill is lifestyle. It's pretty much, you know, goes falls in line with my motto. You know, it comes down to a mindset that no matter what I do in life, I'm going to be hard to kill. Nothing's going to stop me. And if something tries to stop me, it's going to take a long fucking time. Like it's, it's going to get all of me before I even fold, you know, before I even start slowing down and that's just uh, staying prepared. It's pretty much what we believe in the same exact thing. Um, doing everything you can to stay physically and mentally ready at all times and keeping those around you the same. It's hard to kill is a community. It's, nice. um, you know, we have a great community out there and it's keeping, keeping people motivated to, to keep that lifestyle. Mm. That's what, it, that's what it's all about. I dig it, man. That's what, that's what we need, dude. I mean, that's, that's what we need, man. My mission is to make the world a safer place by helping good people to become more dangerous, man. And that's, that's absolutely evil people should fear good people like they should I love it when it clicks too when it clicks when you say click in somebody and it's like wow i just yeah. created like a, a protector you know yeah. a monster <laughs> exactly <laughs> that's exactly what it is it's like yes no i love it man we need more of these around the world and you know if you're listening and you're considering it you can do it man there's these awesome brands you know like what my man matt's putting together that's a tribe man you know we've got a tribe and plug in and find out who you resonate with whose message really like resonates with you and get after it man and start improving yourself because like you can learn academic stuff which is really important you know but there ain't nothing like going ahead and getting it with a good group of people and doing some amazing things amazing training and getting that information in your biology and like in your subconscious and like like you know what i mean that stays with you you know um no i dig it man uh let's see here if you were gonna say we we talked about workouts we talked a little bit about diets who are you at your core man that's usually my opening question but we just dove right into it who's the man behind the work me i'm um, someone who lives by my values I hold my values to the highest level and I hold those I surround myself with to uphold their values. And we usually end up having similar values, you know, and those are selfless service. Those are integrity, loyalty. Um, those three resonate as my top three. Nice. And, you know, I just always trying to do the right thing and always trying to help people. And I yeah. love, I love seeing that. And that's why I volunteer so much of my time to helping people it's because I want to see them do the same, you know, and I've, I've always said help one person a day. If yeah. everybody did that, we could, we could change the world, you know, right. one person a day, that's it. Each person, you know, whatever, whatever, whether it's a phone call telling somebody you appreciate them or taking somebody on a run, who's in a dark place or taking them up for lunch, coffee, you know, just having a conversation sometimes, you know, a dollar here, you know, a hug here. That's uh that's definitely something that I truly value. And, that also ties into my family, you know, um, doing the right thing for my family at all times, you yeah. know, being, being good to myself so I can be good to them as well. Um, yeah. being a role model for my, my son and my daughter, you know, and my little brother and my nephew, my niece and my friend's kids, just being a good role model overall, right. you know, um, trying to help this next generation. You know, I grew up in a, fairly troubled family you know my dad was in and out of jail my entire life mm. so i i definitely try to do what i can to not be that guy and 
you know, I've had some good role models over the years and I thank them for what they've done, whether it's a baseball coach or a senior NCO from the military or, you know, a boss I had at a civilian job, those mentors made me the guy I am. And now I'm just trying to do the same, whether it's for guys that are older than me that are struggling, guys are the same age, veterans, civilians, police, or like I said, these kids and uh, all of our lives, you know? No, I dig it, man. I love that. I always hear people talk about values and I'm like, so what are your values? And then they're like, uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> I love that. You just like, they rolled right off your tongue right after that. You started talking about, I was like, thank you. Good. Yeah. Um, I dig it, man. So I got a notebook right here. Yeah. I've like, you can kind of see it, but I wrote some of them down. Yeah. You know, re- recently there's things I wanted to, you know, like res- the things I wanted to, you know, continue to work on respect is in here. That's something to respect myself. Um, yeah. um, no, that's so important, man. My life changed when I, on it, or when I really was like, what are my values? You know, wisdom, discipline, purpose, freedom, excellence. Those are my values. You know, that's what I want to embody. That's what I want people to experience when they interact with me. That's what I want any tribe that I get to be around to experience. Um, when you talk about respecting yourself, and we'll try to clip this in the next like 15 minutes. Uh, for you. But when you talk about respecting yourself, can you go deeper into that? Just so, you know, people listening can maybe try to do that too. You know, I think it's important for us as people who live in this high tempo veterans, P protectors to also realize that, you know, we're only human at times Mm -hmm. and that we're not always going to be perfect. And sometimes I hold myself to a higher standard than I need to, Um, especially going through these injuries, you know, it's been pretty tough on me because I've, I've been at this, this physical peak for years. And then last year, you know, I get hit by a drunk driver, seven herniated discs, a fracture, a torn hip. I get back and I'm back to myself almost come January, you know, and then I roll my ankle and mess up my wrist in March, you know, and then I just had surgery and now I have hand surgery next month, you know, and overcompensating for my, my hip, you know, so now I'm probably gonna have to get that done. It's just, I am human. Take it slow, Matt, you know, like take it slow, have a little personal respect for where you've been, what you've done and just do what you can do. That's it. You know, uh, yeah, that sounds like a humbling year, man. I wouldn't wish that. that, That's, um, you know, good on you for freaking hammering through that. It's so much. I've been been in and out of depression at times, but, you know, just trying to stay as physical as I can, whether it's arm circles, you know, I'll do a, do a thousand arm circles, whatever I got to do, you know, just to Sun get down. some sort of workout in. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Jeez, man. That's, do some of these that's, things. No, but there's so much, you know, power in that way. You said, dude, like do what you can from where you're at, you know, because in my life I've seen it, you know, I just started off as like a chubby little black kid who was dyslexic, but didn't know anything, you know, a little poor kid from third world country in the Bahamas wasn't cool, you know, like, and then, you know, I just started kind of doing the best I could with what I had and like going little runs and like trying and, you know, trying to, you know, try to be trying to figure things out and like deathly afraid of academia. And then, you know, as I continued trying over the years, you know, then you evolved into this person that's like, wow, I actually, I really have a lot because I invested in it and I just did what I could. That's one of the most powerful, I think just doing what you can from where you're at is one of the most powerful principles we have access to as humans. It's so yeah. underrated. Yeah. Be, be proud of yourself too. You know, yeah. we've, yeah. we've all accomplished something, you know, and maybe it's not what this guy did or what this guy did, but be proud of yourself. Yeah. 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 Self-respect is the most mm-hmm. important respect, man. I dig that. Uh, let's see here. A habit, a habit that you think people should really look at that'll improve their lives or make them better protectors in a 24 hour period or weekly or whatever. I think just developing a routine. Um, so whether it's, you know, maybe it's just that first thing you do every day, you know, maybe it's as soon as I get up, I make the bed for as soon as I get up, I work out. So I get up, I get at coffee and I read a book, I journal, I meditate, I do yoga, go for a run. I think developing that first step in your day will completely change the outcome of your days to come. Yeah. Take control of your day quick. Uh, yeah. no, I take control of that thing. That's what's mm-hmm. up. Man. In the end, you know, one of my favorite questions, what's it all for brother? What's it all been for, man? How do you want to be remembered? Yeah. So I guess the similar question to Ongo and I got kind of emotional, you know, and yeah. I took it from, you know, 
a professional sports player, but it actually really, really resonated with me. And that's to be when my son has asked that question one day, you know, who his hero is, I want him to say it's me. You know, I want him to, I want him and my daughter to say it's me. Like my father is my hero. He is the person I looked up to the most in my life and continue to look up to and continue to ask for guidance guidance. And when I'm long and gone, I want their grandchildren to be proud of me and their grandchildren to like be like, this was my grandfather. This bad motherfucker was doing this in Afghanistan and then came back here and did this. And then yeah. that's it. That's it. Just to be there, be their hero, you know, and to help people along the way. Yeah, man. No, I totally dig that, dude. I think I'm sure that's what's going to happen. I mean, you're, you're changing lives, dude. You're making contributions. And I think contribution is a good <clears throat> equity that's so underrated you know that people just don't they just don't realize the value of man you know it's like you're just somebody you know you're not nobody but then when you start finding ways to help other people like you really become somebody like it's it's an amazing thing i, I can't even explain it dang near, you know yeah and, it's and, good man it's it's, <laughs> it's nice you know it's uh seeing a smile on somebody's face or seeing somebody come out of de- depression or whatever it is you know just it's like all right, like this person's on their way. You know, who's right. next? Right. What would you say about physical fitness as a tool with regards to depression? To how, to how <clears throat> that? um, that's that's pretty much my motto when it comes to Ruck for Vets of uh, the nonprofit. It's uh, you know defeating the mental stigma through physical fitness, and um, it's helped me. I know that, and it's helped a lot of my guys um, and my veteran Tuesday workouts. We go out there, we run, we chop it up while we're running, you know, we get a good workout in, they put in the effort and afterwards we'll, you know, I can just see the relief on all of our faces. You know, it's, the, it's, for me, it's the best way to start off my day. If I don't work out as soon as I wake up, I'm kind of in a, a different mood, you know, and <laughs> finding that, finding that, that right amount of, I guess, uh, physical activity to help your mental status is something that takes time. Um, finding out what, works for you takes time but i definitely think it's it's a huge tool you know it's it's helped me um get off medication stuff like that that the you know the va kind of just throws at you sometimes it's definitely puts me in a good mood whenever I, i'm not you know whenever i feel myself slipping it's just kind of like get in the gym get something done you know a little yeah. bit of anxiety do some pull-ups and push-ups it's it helps 100 percent. it's like a biohack like you hijack all of your body and like get it into a strong positive that gets you into a good state. Um, well, like you said earlier, it's like the cheat code, you know, up, down, up, down, APX, whatever. <laughs> right, right, left bumper. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's what's up, man. No, it is. It's a cheat code, dude. Um, and then solid, man. What are you up to these days? Where can people find you? You mentioned Veteran Tuesdays. Like, is that a thing people can go to? Like, where can folks find you, man? Yeah, we just had a, a new guy come yesterday. Um, to our workout on Monday. Uh, couldn't make it today, so we did one yesterday. But uh, awesome. everything I'm associated with is on my website, operationalathlete.us. Um, you can find my Instagram, YouTube, my nonprofit. You can find Veteran Tuesdays. You can find personalized training, whatever it is, hard to kill fitness, athlete performance. Everybody I'm tied with is on my website. So that's operationalathlete.us. Nice, man. I dig it. Looking forward to, I'm going to have to dig into that a little bit more, man. You mentioned some things. You got all kinds of assets there. Um, dang, Matt, I'm glad we finally did this, brother. This was good. Yeah, bro. I think we've jammed a whole bunch of great stuff that's going to help a lot of people get on their path, you know, um, uh, to becoming higher quality protectors through physical fitness. Uh, so that's, and that's exactly what I wanted to do, man. I'm glad we're connected. Looking forward to doing it. Yeah, Thank you for your time. Absolutely. No, thank you, bro. Next step is a workout. Heck yeah. Yeah, I got to come down there and take my shirt off with you guys, man. Where are you guys out of? Uh, Redondo Beach. Redondo Beach. Okay, so it's a little dry. I can make it happen. Heck yeah. yeah. I get this in. Yeah. That's what's up, brother. Awesome, Absolutely. man. We'll, we'll get after it. Well, thanks again. I appreciate you, dude. And um, looking forward to everything. We'll do some cool stuff, make a video out of it, and, and hammer. Heck yeah. Appreciate it, bro. Thank you, man. And uh, yeah. Look forward to uh, you know talking soon. Awesome, boom. 
Boom. Yo, what up? I hope you guys really enjoyed that episode. Hey, listen, in order to get more out of the brand, I want to encourage you to go join us on our social media platforms and join us at protectornation.com. We post different types of content on our different platforms at different times. Uh, You'll get blog posts, you'll get videos, you'll get real world combat engagements and things like that. So stay plugged in in order to get the most out of the brand. In order to support us, also go to protectornation.com and buy something or join forces with me on Patreon. You'll scroll down the homepage and you'll see the link. Uh, Anything you can give counts, you know, think about whatever you would lose in your cushions or like spend on McDonald's this month, five bucks a month, whatever it is. Uh, That helps. That helps us make the world a better place by making good people dangerous. Anyways, this is Byron Rogers, protector by nature and by trade. And I'll see you on the next piece of content, whether it's a video or podcast out.